excuse me, you are in my spot. Hey everyone, and welcome to Take One. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Brian, and today we're gonna to be going over using Parallax in motion graphics projects in After Effects. Now we've gone over motion graphics before on this channel, but most traditional motion graphics exist on a 2D plane. We discovered that 3D camera tracking helps add the third dimension, but you can also achieve that effect without base footage by using parallax. The main clip that we're going to be looking at today that uses this effect is this. For the second shot in the sequence, the After Effects camera is pulling out of the computer and moving back into 3D space, while the video clips flying out of the iMac are floating around in different positions on the Z-axis, thus making that parallax effect. We could have just done this effect in 2D, it would have been pretty easy, but it really wouldn't have had the impact we really wanted. And here at Seven Wonder Cinema, we like to bring things to the next level, so that's why we added this parallax effect. The first and most important step to achieving this effect is to define the space that you're in. For something like a flat white background, this can be difficult, but that's where the Tele Award and the Slate come in. I position the Tele very close to the 3D camera and then move the Slate very far back in the scene behind the computer, positioned in Z space away from the camera in order to create those types of boundaries in the scene. In this case, the Tele is the closest part of the scene to the camera and the Slate is the farthest thing away from the scene. For example, if you watch my hands moving like this, even though they're moving in the same directions, because one hand is closer to the camera than the other, their motion looks a bit different when you're looking through the lens of the camera. That's parallax in real life, I guess. In this shot, you can see that the Tele is moving much differently than the Slate. And then everything else moves independently different in the scene as well, based on their position on the Z axis. What also works really well in the shot is the camera movement. You need to have a camera movement that helps sell the parallax effect. The first big movement here helps show off the distance between the video clips, and the slow movement in the end helps take everything in the scene in. To help sell things a bit more, you can also see the parallax more when the items in the scenes are moving independently from each other. Another quick tip, for the computer and the other production elements in the scene, we ended up putting these objects in front of a green screen. Unfortunately, not the best green screen because of quarantine restrictions. And then later we cut and keyed those elements out. These elements also were filmed with some inerrant motion with them in order to add more realism to their movements. Overall, while this wasn't a very, very complex shot, it still took many hours of experimenting to get the result that we really wanted. When someone sees a final product of a visual effects or motion graphics project, they don't see all the steps you take and the amount of trial and error you do during the process. They only see the finished product in the end. When you're trying something new, it can really take many rounds of revision and experimenting to get it exactly the way that you want it and what you were envisioning. And sometimes what you were originally envisioning may not look the best in the end it could be. And you might have to try and go a different direction with it. And projects with a lot of steps like this, we can really step back and learn a lot from the process. Well, that's it for this Take One episode. Be on the lookout for more visual effects breakdowns and other exciting video production behind the scenes video from Seven Wonders. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned.